How to Sell Your House, our step-by-step -step guide. Welcome to our channel. We are the Denver Duo. My name is Emily Simpson and I'm Kelly McCall. We are associate brokers, moms, and foodies. Today, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know when you decide it's time to sell your home. Where do you begin? What are the steps? What are the common mistakes to avoid? No need to worry. That's what today's video is all about. Make sure you check our last video on earnest money versus a down payment. Most home sellers dream of a stress-free sale in which they can simply list their house, quickly find a qualified buyer, collect the cash, and hand over the keys. If only it were that simple. In reality, selling the home involves many moving parts, some that you can control and some that are out of your hands. For example, geography might influence how long your house lingers on the market, or how high of a list price you can get away with. In locations where competition is hot and inventory is low, odds are you'll sell faster and command a higher price. Conversely, in places where home sales have cooled, you'll likely have to work harder to attract the right buyer for you. So, as a seller, you want to be prepared and control whatever factors you're able to. Things like hiring a great real estate agent and maximizing your home's online appeal can translate into a more more seamless closing and more money in the bank. Here are nine steps you can take to sell your home in 2023. Number one, set a timeline for selling your home. Selling a house is a major undertaking that can take several months from start to finish or much longer depending on the local market conditions and the level of inventory available. As soon as you decide to sell your house, jump right into researching real estate agents to find someone with the right experience for your situation. At least two or three months before you plan to list, consider getting a pre-listing home inspection. This is optional but can be useful to identify any and all problems, especially if you suspect structural or mechanical issues that might need addressing to facilitate a sale. Leave enough time to schedule necessary repairs. About a month before listing your house, start working on staging and deep cleaning in preparation for taking listing photos. Keep clutter to a minimal and consider moving excess items to a storage unit to show your home in its best light. Number two, hire an agent who knows the market. The internet makes it really easy to jump into a real estate agent's professional history and experience, helping you choose the right person to work with. Look up agents' online profiles to learn how long they've been in the industry, how many sales they've closed, and what designations they have earned. Pay attention to how and where they market their listings and whether or not they use professional photos. Some homeowners might be tempted to save on paying a commission and instead sell their home themselves without an agent. This is known as for sale by owner or a FISBO. The amount sellers stand to save on those fees can be thousands of dollars, usually 2.5% or 3% of the total sale price. As the sellers, you'll still need to pay the buyer's agent's commission. However, an experienced agent does a lot to earn their fee. For example, they can expose your house to the broadest audience and negotiate on your behalf to garner the best offers possible. If you go at it alone, you'll have to personally manage prepping your home, marketing it, reviewing the buyer's offers, and handling all the negotiations and closing costs. When working with an agent, keep in mind that real estate commissions are often negotiable. As a result, you might be able to get a break at the closing table. Number three, determining what to upgrade and what not to. If you're going to spend money on costly upgrades, make sure the changes you make have a high return on your investment. It doesn't make sense to install new granite countertops. For an example, if you only stand to break even on them or even lose money. Plus, these improvements may not be necessary to sell your home for top dollar, particularly if if inventory levels are low in your area. A good real estate agent will know what people expect in your area and can help you decide what needs doing and what doesn't. In general, updates to the kitchen and bathrooms provide the highest return on investment. If you have old cabinetry, you might be able to simply replace the doors and hardware for an updated look without breaking the bank. A fresh coat of neutral paint and spruced up landscaping are other low cost ways to make a great first impression. There's also the option of getting a pre-sale home inspection. This is is optional but it can be a wise upfront investment especially in an older home for a few hundred dollars you'll get a detailed inspection report that identifies any major problems 
This alerts you in advance to issues that buyers will likely flag when they do their own inspection later on in the process. By being a few steps ahead of the buyer, you might be able to speed up the selling process by doing repairs in tandem with other home prep work. This means by the time your house hits the market, it should be ready to sell, drama-free and quickly. Number four, set a realistic price. Even in competitive market, buyers don't want to pay more than they have to, so it's crucial to get the pricing right. Going too high can backfire, while underestimating a home's value might leave money on the table. To price your home perfectly from start, consult COPS. This is information about recently sold properties in your neighborhood and specifically properties similar to yours. Gives you an idea of what comparable homes around you are selling for, thus helping you decide how much you might reasonably ask. Homes that are priced too high will turn off potential buyers who may not even consider looking at the property. In addition, homes with multiple price reductions may give buyers the impression there's something wrong with the home's condition or that's somehow undesirable. So it's best to eliminate that need for multiple reductions by price in your home to attract the wildest pool of buyers from the start. Number five, list your house with professional photos. This step will likely involve your real estate agent registering the listing with the local MLS multiple listing service. Here are some tips to get your home market ready. Get those professional photos. Work with your real estate agent to schedule a photographer to capture marketing photos of your home. With how easy it is to look at houses online these days, professional photos are key. A pro photographer with a strong portfolio knows how to make rooms appear bigger, brighter, and more attractive. The same goes for your lawn and outdoor areas. Focus on the online appeal. You've probably heard of curb appeal, but professionals say online appeal is now even more important. In fact, nearly all home buyers look online first. The quality of your web presentation will determine whether someone calls and makes an appointment or clicks to the next listing. Stage it and keep it clean. Staging a home entails removing excess furniture, personal belongings, and unsightly items from the home while it's on the market and arranging rooms for optimal flow and purpose. If you're in a slower market or selling a luxury home, investing in professional staging could help stand out. Nationally, professional home staging costs an average of around $1,700, according to Home Advisor. But prices range between about $775 and a little over $2,800. Clear out for showings. Make yourself scarce when potential buyers come to view your home. Let them imagine themselves in the space, free from the distractions of meeting you and talking to you. Seeing the current homeowner lurking around can cause buyers to be hesitant. It could keep them from really considering your home as an option. Generally, buyers are accompanied by their real estate agent to view your home. You can also ask your own agent to be present at showings if you'd like. Number six, review and negotiate offers. After your home officially hits the market and buyers have seen it, the offers will ideally start rolling in. This is where a real estate agent or attorney is your best advocate and go-to source for advice. If your local market favors sellers, buyers will likely offer at or above asking price. On the other hand, if sales are slow in your area, you may have to be open to negotiating. When you receive an offer, you have a few choices. Accept it as is, make a counter offer, or just reject the offer. A counter offer is a response to an offer in which you negotiate on terms and or price. Counter offers should always be made in writing and provide a short time frame, ideally 48 hours or less, for the buyers to respond. You can offer a credit for paint or carpet, but insist on keeping your original asking price in place. Or you might offer to leave a certain item behind to sweeten the deal. Like a hot tub. Woo. If you're lucky enough to get multiple offers, you might be tempted to simply go with the highest bid. But look closely at other aspects of the offer too, such as form of payment, cash, versus financing, type of financing, down payment amount, contingencies, concession requests, proposed closing date. Be mindful that if a buyer is relying on lender financing, the property has to be appraised. Any shortfall between the purchase price and the appraised value will have to be made up somewhere or the deal could fall apart. Number seven, weigh closing costs and tax implications. In any real estate transaction, both the buyer and the seller must pay at least some of the closing costs. The seller typically pays the real estate agent's commission, which is usually around the 6% of the sales price. Some other closing costs commonly paid by the seller include transfer taxes, recording fees, outstanding leads, and attorney fees. Additionally, if the buyer has negotiated any credits to be paid at closing to cover repairs, for example, the seller will pay those too. Your real estate agent or the closing agent 
agent should provide you with a complete list of costs you'll be responsible for at the closing table. The good news is that you may not owe the IRS taxes on your profits from the sale. It depends on whether it was your primary residence, how long you lived there, and or how much money you made on the sale. If you've owned and lived in your home for at least two out of the five previous years before selling it, then you will not have to pay taxes on any profit up to 250k. For married couples, it increases up to 500,000. If the profit from your home is greater than that, you'll need to report it to the IRS as a capital gain. Number eight, consider hiring a real estate attorney. Some states actually require sellers to have a real estate attorney to close on a home sale, but many don't. Colorado doesn't. Regardless of your state's rule, the expense is worth it to protect such a large financial transaction. It may cost you a couple thousand dollars, but there's a lot more money than that at stake, and it can never hurt to have a legal expert give everything the okay. In addition, an attorney can help fill out paperwork, review contracts and documents, identify potential issues, and ensure the sale goes as smoothly as possible. An attorney would also be able to spot title issues that can hold up your sale for weeks or months or even torpedo the deal. An attorney can also help with outstanding liens, judgments, or encumbrances. Also trust issues, mortgage balances, tax issues, or encroachments. Number nine, gather paperwork and close. Lots of paperwork is needed to properly document a home sale, so keep it organized all in one place to help things go more quickly. Your agent can help you make sure you've got everything you need. Some of the main documents you'll need to compile include the original purchase contract, property survey, certificate of occupancy, and certificates of compliance with local codes, mortgage documents, tax records, also homeowner's insurance, appraisal from your home purchase, and home inspection report if you had one done. Finally, bring all of that paperwork plus payment of any fees and the keys to give to the new homeowners. Once everything is signed and handed over, your house is sold. Bottom line, selling your home Home requires a lot of work and be quite complicated. Following along with the nine step guide and having a trustworthy real estate professional by your side, us can help you successfully navigate the process. Hopefully you got some good nuggets. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. We are here for you with all of your real estate wants and needs. We'll be posting a new video on Friday, so stay tuned. That is <laughs> what are the common mistakes? <laughs> <laughs> Just make sure. <laughs> Most home sellers dream of a stress fee. <laughs> a stress fee. Yeah. yeah and more, more money in the bank. More returned. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, we're not doing that. Okay.